Hey Defenders, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how we can install Atomic Red on our Linux endpoints so that we can validate and spot any gaps within our detection rules. So Atomic Red, uh, as similar within the last video where we installed it on a Windows endpoint, is a great framework that we can do to simulate attacks, which is great for our SOC team to be able to periodically run these to be able to inspect detection rules that are in place and make sure that they are alerting on what they would expect to be alerted on. So in this video, we're going to perform a similar exercise, but now on a Linux endpoint. So like Windows, we uh, Atomic Red is still going to use PowerShell, whether it's on Linux or Mac OS. So I'm gonna follow Microsoft's documentation, which Atomic Red links to in this, in this readme here, which I'll also include in the docs as well. So here I'm on a, my distro of Linux is Debian. So I'm just gonna follow Debian. If you're on a different distro, then you can just select the appropriate one there. Uh, I'm just copy, which it looks like 751 is what will be installed. So here are my Linux endpoint. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in there. And this will uh, install PowerShell. And then we should also get a shell once this finishes installing. And sure enough, we do. It's all right, that looks good. Go ahead and clear that out. We can see that in uh, I'm in PowerShell here on my Linux endpoint. Now what we're going to do is now install the execution framework. So I'm going to go, at, which also installs this PowerShell of YAML, which is also a dependency. So I'm just going to copy that value. And again, while I'm in my PowerShell shell here, so I'll paste that in there. That'll install the module. I'll go ahead and hit A for yes to all. And all right, we got that installed. And then I'm also going to copy this command here to also get the folder. And I'm also going to do a git clone here in a sec. So also run that guy. And then I'm also, once this finishes, and I'll paste all these commands, or I'll include all these commands in the medium post. Uh, I'm also going to install the repo of the Atomic Red on this endpoint. So I'm actually gonna get on my PowerShell shell and I'll install git, and then I'll clone this repo. And then, all right, so I'll go ahead and clear that out. And now uh, with Atomic Red installed, we should be able to run just a very basic test. So if I go ahead and, uh, Paste this command here where we're invoking Atomic Red. Let me clean up my quotes. There, I should be able to just run a, a test and I don't even know what this does. I guess it <laughs> looks to see if there's any SQL late, light databases on your system. And then it looks like it does a curl, I guess maybe to try to extract uh, and send that file. But that's not my concern here. What I was concerned with was just making sure that uh, Atomic Red was able to successfully run. So that looks good. So we've now installed Atomic Red onto our Linux endpoint, but we don't wanna have to manually get a shell onto our Linux endpoint to run tests. It'd be better if we could leverage Copilot and Velociraptor to provide a more user-friendly way to run uh, simulated attacks. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. So here within Velociraptor, we also have a public repo where you can grab the Linux tax simulation artifact. So I'll go ahead and copy the contents of this file. And back in Velociraptor, I'm gonna go ahead and add an artifact here. Go ahead and save that off. And actually one thing I do want to review and kind of why I did that git command is you can see that we're importing the module directly from the a Git repo that we just cloned. So that's why I did that. So if you output it to a different location, then just make sure that you reflect that appropriately within the artifact definition here. But most of you guys won't, won't need to touch that. Um, but let's validate that we can actually uh, now simulate this within Velociraptor before we actually get to, to Copilot. So actually before I do that and this is an exercise too that I highly recommend just dedicating to a dev or tack Linux server. I wouldn't recommend running this on a production uh, server. I would highly recommend just deploying a, a test one that you can simulate and run these attacks on. Um, but one thing that I did discover during this that took me a little longer than I'd care to admit to figure out is that we're going to have the Velociraptor service actually run as the root user. Now, I know that's not necessarily best practice, but again, this just being a demo box and not running within a production, I'm just going to modify the service here to run as my root user. So here, I'm gonna set that to root. I'll save that off. I'll go ahead and do a daemon reload here, and then I will restart the Velociraptor client service. 
And with that restarted, I should now be able to navigate into, uh, so here on my, my Velociraptor endpoint here, I'll go into collected. I'll select, let's run a new artifact. Uh, here I'll select this, I'll select Linux. I'll go to my configure parameters and here is now where I can select what attack I may want to run. And for this instance, I'll do base64 decoding with Python. Let's see what that does. So go ahead and launch this off. And now what we should see is Velociraptor actually run our and simulate our attack for us. And so sure enough here, it's, invo it's invoking PowerShell. So that is why we leverage PowerShell and is invoking the atomic red. So it's importing our atomic red and then invoke atomic tests. And then against the test that we just specified. And if we go into results here, we should see uh, if we know it ran successfully, we will see this little output here, which will just link you to uh, the actual readme of what the attack does, um, which I'm not going to cover in this video. But it looks like it ran successfully, so we validated that. Now let's go into Copilot, and if I go into uh, Alerts, and here I'll go into Atomic Red Team. Here, I'm just gonna select, it needs to be a Linux type of attack. Man, my mouse is, I think I need to replace my mouse. <laughs> uh, and here, I'll just select one of these. Uh, I'll select data from local system. Let's see if there's anything for Linux here. Cool. Oh, actually, this is the same test, it looks like, the SQLite uh, piece. So I'll go ahead and select that. Uh, and then I'll select my machine. So here, it's my uh, Sock Fortress Lab agent. So this correlates right directly to what I have within Velociraptor as well. And if I just select simulate attack here, what we should see is that a new artifact will kick off within Velociraptor. Sure enough, here it is. But we should get the same type of execution and all that good stuff. So we should see our results uh, not only reflected here as we do, so that looks good, but also uh, within Copilot as well. So we'll get the output here. So that's great and all, but how do I actually uh, validate what was going on? So invalidate that my detection rule is actually hitting on what I expected to. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into gray log and I'm going to go ahead and filter on my agent. And actually I can see some logs here, so that's good. I get something for a suspicious file scan, SQLite file header inspection. And you'll also notice too that I am running Tetragon on this Linux box, which I highly recommend. It's a great uh, monitoring agent that we can then use the Wazoo agent to ship logs uh, that Tetragon is collecting and sending them to the Seam stack, uh, which I covered in a previous video, which I'll also link to that in the description below. Um, but here we can actually see the command that it's running. Let's run something else though. So back within here, let's see if we can set a cron job. So scheduled task job, uh, cron. So cron replace cron tab with reference file. Cool. So this looks like it would create a cron job for some type of persistence. Uh, so let's go ahead and simulate this attack. Uh, and I'll just select this top one here. Uh, again, I'll select my agent, run simulate. And then again, within Velociraptor, we should see it start to kick off. All right, and we got our results back. It looks like it's completed. Let's go back into gray log and let's refresh and let's see if we got anything new here. All right, here we go. We have a script executed from hidden payload. So here we can see uh, it's using the cron tab command to it looks like create a cron job on my server. So if I, let's open up our cron, cron tab here and sure enough, we do see our evil.sh. Uh, which is what it looks like uh, it echoed into that into our cron job location. And I'm curious if this file even, I'm curious if it actually creates this file too. Let's see. No. So it just makes that entry within the cron job. It didn't actually create the shell script there. So, but we have validated that our detection rule, right? So script executed and sure enough i see a rule of 15. let's see are there any other exciting ones we can do oh, what does this file and directory discovery do let's maybe see if we can run this account discovery local account let's see what this guy does so i'll select simulate attack let's just try to enumerate user let's just try to view the sudoers file so again i'll select my linux endpoint run this attack let's go back in the gray log so access to sudoers file detected. So we can definitely see that it just ran a cat to Etsy sudoers. Possible file and directory discoveries. So for the three attacks that we just ran, we can be very confident that our detection rules are detecting as they should be, and they are setting it to a rule level 12 or that of a uh, syslog level two alert. So we know we can now 
use this framework and how we have it built into Velociraptor and to Copilot, we can now use Copilot to just easily simulate these type of attacks so that we can validate that our detection rules are detecting on what we would expect them to be detecting on, which is always a important exercise that I recommend you guys to frequently engage in. But that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next one.